Welcome, welcome, welcome to a Fantasy News Special Report. I am your host, Green Daniel, and today we're going to be doing a deep dive into everything we know about the up coming Lord of the Rings TV show. We're doing this because there's a lot of misinformation out there. I see people speculating on forums, Reddit, what have you, and just saying blatantly false things. So I've done the best I can to pull every bit of confirmed information we have about the show, and at the end, we're going to cover the supposed drama between the Tolkien estate and Amazon, something I feel that has been greatly exaggerated. But before we get into the rest of the video, I do want to talk about today's sponsor, Campfire blaze as some of you may recall campfire actually sponsored the channel here before they are a wonderful story telling service. If you're crafting a novel, if you're working on your own story, Campfire is an excellent way to organize your thoughts, your planning, character arcs, world building mechanisms, all kinds of stuff. And Blaze is their next iteration. They're currently launching a Kickstarter where you as the user are going to have so many more awesome features available to you. These upgrades include a system to help you organize your magic system, an actual word process, Processor, a way to keep track of your languages, really just an overall improvement of what's available to you on the application. My actual favorite personal upgrade from Blaze is the fact that it'll now be a browser-based application, which means it doesn't interact with your OS at all. It's going to be just within the browser. That's great upgrade. Good call. I like that a lot, Campfire. They're also upgrading their payment methods where it's going to be subscription-based and you only pay for the tools you use. You will be able to collaborate with others in real time. And if you'd like to support this company, that is great for keeping track of writing your stories, writing a D&D &D campaign, etc, etc. Go ahead and follow the link in the description down below and in the pinned comment, and you can go ahead and contribute to their Kickstarter campaign. So going over just the basics here. Of course, the release date is unknown still. Production has not even begun and will not until 2020. Everything still seems to be in the planning phases as of right now. The only bit of information we have right now is this quote from Amazon studio head Jennifer Salt about a potential release date. It'll be in production in two years. 2021 is the hope. But there are a lot of people who wish it was 2020. So at latest 2021, there might be some push to get it going in 2020. But as of right now, that is all still uh, not entirely sure. I, for some reason, do have this gut feeling that production actually will be in 2020 starting and then continue into 2021. That just seems most likely from the information we do have. But nothing is absolutely set in concrete. Moving on to trailers. No, there are no Lord of the Rings Amazon trailers released yet. Those are all fan-made if you've seen them. But what we do have is a couple teasers of maps and a bit of a peek into the people who are involved with creating the show, and that's all been teasers and look fine. And the only bit of solid information we have gotten from these teasers is that it will take place during the Second Age. What does that mean for Middle-earth? Well, the cast of characters we've seen up to this point will largely not be there. The only characters who possibly might return are Gandalf and some elves. And Sauron. I, I, it's Sauron, Saruman. Okay, more, more people, a, a few, a few characters do still exist in the Second Age. There's a lot of old people in Lord of the Rings. But in terms of the actual fellowship, Gandalf would be the only one who would possibly be old enough to actually appear in the show because he is 7,000 years old and did live during the Second Age. <laughs> In terms of casting, there is only rumors so far. Nothing has been confirmed, not even Sir Ian McKellen's return to play the role of Gandalf, although he has gone on record saying no matter how old he is, he still wants to play Gandalf, no matter what. He is Gandalf. So I assume if asked by Amazon, he would say yes, assuming Gandalf will actually be in the show. Something that is, again, still unconfirmed. The exact quote from Sir Ian McKellen being, what do you mean, another Gandalf? I haven't said yes because I haven't been asked. But are you suggesting that someone else is going to play it? Gandalf is over 7,000 years old, so I'm not too old. I like that. I like that a lot. We do have one casting rumor that is being largely reported. Her name is Markella Cavanaugh, and she looks like this, but it's completely unknown if this is true. It's confirmed enough to be on IMDb, but IMDb notoriously has false information a lot of the time. 
And it is also confirmed that Peter Jackson is not involved with this adaptation at all. And now as we move on to setting, of course, as I previously mentioned, we will be in the Second Age. And what does that exactly mean for the Lord of the Rings? Well, the Second Age is an incredibly magical time for the Lord of the Rings and Middle-earth as a whole. Much more magical than the Third Age, the age that The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy took place in. That's kind of the overriding philosophy of Tolkien's work. The world is becoming less and less magical, hence why all the elves were leaving Middle-earth and why the rings were necessary as these channelers of magical it's a whole lot we're not gonna get into it here but yes the second age will be a whole lot more magical than the third the second age actually ends with the beginning of what we see at the lord of the rings movie with the first fall of sauron sauron is a servant of morgoth a much more powerful being who we don't have to worry about anymore not really it's it's complicated but no it has not been confirmed that sauron will be the big baddie of the show though it probably seems likely that this tv show will actually be aimed at sauron if i had to take a bet I would say it'll be about Sauron still. So now we have Amazon's investment. Will the show be good? Does Amazon really care? Undoubtedly, inarguably, yes. Amazon gave the Tolkien estate $250 million to be able to secure the rights to do this TV show. That is an insane amount of money. More than most shows have in their entire lifetime devoted to them just to secure the rights. On top of that, it has been announced that Amazon will give the entire show and its process a billion dollar budget. That does not mean all of that money is going to the individual TV show episodes. That includes marketing costs, all kinds of things, but it is still the largest budget record shattering ever given to a season of television or a series announced right off the bat by, by a lot, by a huge margin. The low end estimates for the individual cost of episodes is $20 million per episode. Again, record shattering. This is the most expensive TV show in television history in its debut. No question. It's getting that investment. Amazon cares a lot. So yes, Amazon cares. We're getting a new setting. They're trying to be as careful, it seems, with those they've announced who are working with the show as they can to stay true to Tolkien's vision. So why are there these rumors that cause headlines like this to pop up? Well, the Tolkien estate is notoriously kind of difficult to work with. Inarguably, yes, they do. And I don't entirely blame them. The Tolkien estate has been burned in the past, and they've seen what poor adaptations can do the reputation of a fantasy series. So apparently they have veto power for this upcoming show a controversial thing among fans. It takes control away from the showrunner without a doubt, and usually very successful adaptations follow one artistic vision, so how could it interfere with this artistic vision to have an estate stepping in and making executive decisions, changing the possible course of the show? Some fans don't like this, saying no, it should just be an artist's vision, it should be a showrunner's vision, give the director's control, while others are saying no, the Tolkien estate knows the source material better than anyone else, and they will make the correct decisions in terms of of what should and should not be within the show. It puts us as fans in a bit of an interesting position. I personally do not know where exactly I sit on this matter, and so of course, I pass the question on to you. How do you feel about the upcoming Amazon adaptation, and do you like how involved the Tolkien estate appears to be at this point? After the debacle that was the Hobbit trilogy, I can understand why it would take so much money for them to be willing to give up for another adaptation, and why one of the caveats of that adaptation is they get to be direct involved in a big way. Studio decisions have screwed over a lot of adaptations in the past, and I guess their estate stepping in could act as a barrier from crazy stupid studio decisions? I guess that's just wishful thinking. I'm hoping that might be the case. Anyway, guys, I look forward to reading your comments on this last controversial matter in the comments down below. It's going to be a strange one, with it without a doubt. This will be interesting, to say the least. Amazon certainly hasn't bought up the most fantasy adaptations for the upcoming wave, but they have what is considered the two largest franchises coming down the road, with Amazon and The Wheel of Time. And I've covered The Wheel of Time adaptation several times. I'll have a card popping up if you'd like to see my deep dive into the upcoming what we do and don't know for the upcoming Wheel of Time adaptation with Amazon as well. And like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And thank you again to Campfire for sponsoring this episode. Have a good one, y'all. Peace!